Dear students, Namaskar. I hope that you are all well and must be excited to learn today's lesson. Today, we will study Chapter of Science of Class 7, Heat. Children, before we start with our today's lesson, I will ask you a few questions and you try to answer those questions. My first question is, what type of clothes do we wear in winter? We wear woolen clothes in winter. And in summer? We wear cotton clothes in summer. How do you feel when you bask under sun in winter? We feel good because in winter we like warmth. Children, can we find out whether an object is hot or cold by touching it? So you will say that yes, by touching an object, we can find whether an object is hot or cold. But how do we decide which object is hotter? Is our sense of touch reliable? When we compare two objects. In today's lesson, we will try to find out answer to this question. In today's lesson, the topics we are going to discuss are hot and cold, measuring temperature, thermometer, transfer of heat. Children, let us first know about hot and cold. We were talking that in summer, we prefer to wear light colored cotton clothes because cotton clothes keep us cool in summer. Similarly, in winter, we wear woolen clothes because they keep us warm. In our day-to-day -day life, we come across a number of objects. Some of them are hot and some of them are cold. Tea is hot and ice cream is cold. Now let us perform an activity to see how some objects may be hotter or colder than other objects. Take three small containers, label them as A, B and C. Put cold water in container A and hot water in container B. Mix some cold and hot water in container C. Now dip your left hand in container A and the right hand in container B. After keeping the hands in the two containers for 2-3 to three minutes, put both the hands simultaneously in container C. Left hand feels that the water in mug C is hot and the right hand feels that the same water is cold. So this shows that we cannot always rely on our sense of touch to decide whether an object is hot or cold. Sometimes it may deceive us. A reliable measure of the hotness of an object is its temperature. Temperature is measured by a device called thermometer. Measuring temperature. Children, when you or someone else in your family had fever, the temperature was measured by a thermometer. The thermometer that measures our body temperature is called a clinical thermometer. A clinical thermometer consists of a long, narrow, uniform glass tube. It has a bulb at one end. This bulb contains mercury. Outside the bulb, a small shining thread of mercury can be seen. You will also find a scale on the thermometer. The scale we use is the Celsius scale indicated by degree Celsius. A clinical thermometer reads temperature from 35 degree Celsius to 42 degree Celsius. One more scale is also used to measure temperature which is called Fahrenheit scale and range of the Fahrenheit thermometers vary from 
94 to 108 degrees. If you observe a clinical thermometer carefully, you will see a kink near the bulb. It prevents mercury level from falling on its own. The clinical thermometer is designed to measure the temperature of human body only. Do not use a clinical thermometer for measuring the temperature of any other object than the human body. Always use a thermometer carefully because it may break easily. Also, mercury is a toxic substance. So, we should prevent thermometer from breaking. Now, we will talk about another thermometer that is laboratory thermometer. The temperature of other objects is measured by a thermometer known as the laboratory thermometer. The range of a laboratory thermometer is generally from minus 10 degree Celsius to 110 degree Celsius. Children, you must have seen weather reports in which maximum and minimum temperatures are reported. The maximum and minimum temperatures are measured by a thermometer called the maximum minimum thermometer. Let us now learn how a thermometer is used. Let us perform an activity. Take some tap water in a beaker or a mug. Dip the laboratory thermometer in water so that the bulb is immersed in water but does not touch the bottom or the sides of the container. Hold the thermometer vertically. You will observe the movement of mercury in the thermometer. Be careful that the thermometer should not be tilted. Wait till the mercury thread becomes steady. Note the reading. This is the temperature of water at that time. So, this is how we use a laboratory thermometer. Children, now we will get to know about transfer of heat. You might have observed that a frying pan becomes hot when kept on a flame. It is because the heat passes from the flame to the utensil. When the pan is removed from the fire, it slowly cools down. The heat is now transferred from the pan to the surroundings. So, this is called transfer of heat. The heat flows from a hotter object to a colder object. There are various methods of transfer of heat. Let us know about them. We will perform an activity and understand that how the transfer of heat takes place. Take a rod or flat strip of a metal, say of aluminium or iron. Fix a few small pins with wax pieces on the rod. These pins should be at nearly equal distances. Clamp the rod to a stand. If you do not find a stand, you can put one end of the rod in between bricks. Now heat the other end of the rod and observe. You will observe that pins are falling one after the other. Also, the pin closer to the flame falls first. Can you explain why does this happen? This is because heat is getting transferred from hotter end to the colder end and this process is called conduction. In solids, generally, the heat is transferred by the process of conduction. If we perform this activity with the help of a wood or a pencil, we see that wood catches fire but there is no transfer of heat. The materials which do not allow heat to pass through them easily 
are poor conductors of heat such as plastic and wood poor conductors are known as insulators the materials which allow heat to pass through them easily are called conductors of heat for example aluminium iron and copper now let us know about second method of transfer of heat take a round bottomed flask if flask is not available a beaker can be used fill it 2/3 with water place it on a tripod or make some arrangement to place the flask in such a way that you can heat it by placing a candle below it wait till the water in the flask is still place a crystal of potassium permanganate at the bottom of the flask gently using a straw now heat the water by placing the candle just below the crystal you will observe that the crystals of potassium permanganate rise up with water when water is heated the water near the flame gets hot hot water rises up the cold water from the sides moves down towards the source of heat this water also gets hot and rises and water from the sides moves down this process continues till the whole water gets heated this mode of heat transfer is known as convection children now we will discuss about sea breeze and land breeze during the day the land gets heated faster than the water the air over the land becomes hotter and rises up the cooler air from the sea rushes in towards the land and take its place the warm air from the land moves towards the sea to complete the cycle the air from the sea is called the sea breeze to receive the cooler sea breeze the windows of the houses in coastal areas are made to face the sea at night it is exactly the reverse the water cools down more slowly than the land so the cool air from the land moves towards the sea this is called land breeze children when we come out in the sun we feel warm how does the heat from the sun reach us it cannot reach us by conduction or convection as there is no medium such as air in most part of the space between the earth and the sun from the sun the heat comes to us by another process known as radiation there is one more example of radiation which we see in our daily life when we sit in front of a room heater we get heat by this process a hot utensil kept away from the flame cools down as it transfers heat to the surroundings by radiation so these are the three methods by which transfer of heat takes place the first one is conduction the second method is convection and the third method of transfer of heat is radiation children now we will study about heat absorption capacity of different colors for this let us perform an activity take two identical tin cans paint the outer surface of one black and of the other white pour equal amounts of water in each and leave them in the midday sun for about an hour measure the temperature of water in both the cans do you find any difference in the temperatures you will observe that the temperature of water in the can which is painted black is more than the temperature of the water in the can which is painted white children 
Now we will talk about the type of clothes we wear in summer and winter. Clothes we wear in summer. Light colored clothes reflect most of the heat that falls on them and therefore we feel more comfortable wearing them in the summer. We wear dark colored clothes in the winter. Dark colored clothes absorb more heat and therefore we feel comfortable with dark colored clothes in the winter. Wool is a poor conductor of heat. Moreover, there is air trapped in between the wool fibers. This air prevents the flow of heat from our body to the cold surroundings. So, we feel warm. Now, I have a question for you. Suppose you are given the choice in winter for using either one thick blanket or two thin blankets joined together. What would you choose and why? Remember that there would be a layer of air in between the blankets. Now let us revise what you have learnt. An object feels hot or cold because of its temperature. The normal temperature of the human body is 37 degrees Celsius. The transfer of heat takes place by three methods, conduction, convection and radiation. Dark colored objects absorb more heat than the light colored objects. Clinical thermometer and laboratory thermometer use mercury. Children, now I will ask a few questions and I hope that you will be able to answer them. My first question is, what is the range of temperature of a clinical thermometer? And your options are 35 to 42 degrees Celsius or minus 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. And the right answer is 35 to 42 degrees Celsius. Minus 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius is the range of a laboratory thermometer. My next question is, choose the conductor from the following substances. Iron, wood, plastic and rubber. So the right answer is iron. Iron is the conductor of heat whereas wood, plastic and rubber are insulators of heat. My third question is, why do we wear light colored clothes in summer? Light colored clothes reflect most of the heat radiations falling on them. So, we feel comfortable in light colored clothes. So, with this, we complete our chapter and I hope that you must have understood the chapter well. Now, read your book and try to solve the exercise questions. Children, due to spread of coronavirus, stay home, stay safe, keep learning and keep growing. Thank you.